wearing the navy blue of Victoria. Yes, he uses his feet and goes again through midwicket. That's an even better shot from the Victorian captain. Swept away very nicely by the Cole Bottom for four. Oh, he's re-given! That is 50. The man from Northcote. Welcome to the Vic State Cricket Podcast. It's a bit different today. Firstly, I'm one of three, not one of two. And we're going to sort of change colour from navy and white to the red of the Renegades because the WBBL season starts this week and the Renegades are in action for the first time on Friday night. So we thought we'd get two of the stars in. And it's easy to remember who's who because they're both Georgias. <laughs> <laughs> Georgia squared, if you like. Georgia Wareham and Georgia Presswich. I don't know who to start with first. We'll go with Georgia Wareham <laughs> because you've been at the Renegades since the very start. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. No worries at all. And then we go to Georgia Presswich. Georgia, welcome. Good morning. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Is it, does it sort of hit you yet that it's here? I'll start with you, Georgia. That you, all of a sudden, the BBL season, we talk about it so much in the build up to it, then bang, here it is. Yeah, that's exactly it. We, um, it, It's really crept up on us. Um, and I was actually speaking to Rocket this morning um, and I said it didn't really hit me until he spoke to us um, at our first team meeting the other day and I got the butterflies and the goosebumps. Um, but, yeah, it's come around really quickly, but, yeah, it's just super excited. What about you, Georgia? Yeah, much the same. I think, like, given how quickly the tournament, like, unfolds, um, it comes and goes really quickly. So, um, yeah, it's all about who's who's ready at the start. But, um, yeah, our team meeting was really cool the other day to get everyone in the same room. So, um, yeah, we're all pretty pumped to go. How difficult is it because the build-up is so short? We talk, we talk about it a lot, but you've got – you're playing for Victoria, you might be playing for Australia, then all of a sudden – you'll get together in, and then in, within days you're playing. Is that is that hard or is it because it's the same for everybody, it doesn't matter so much? Yeah, it probably doesn't matter as much because, yeah, like you said, it's the same for everyone. But um, I reckon for us we've got a pretty similar core than we had the last few years, so it's, it's a little bit easier. It's like we all sort of communicate throughout the year when we're playing against each other, so it's not as hard to, to gel as a group when we come back together. But, um, yeah, for the newbies I'm sure it is. A little bit different and, um, yeah, for a new competition for them. But, um, yeah, I feel like it's, it's pretty similar to everyone else really. Does it feel like the first day of school? Does it feel like this is the start of the, the cricket season or are we not paying enough respect to um, the WNCL? No, a little bit in a way. Um, I will say that the Renegades probably is one of the only franchises that the players come from different states like you know the Brisbane Heat they're very Queensland Tassie are very all the Hobart Hurricanes are very Tassie so the Renegades makeup is probably the most sporadic out of uh, all the big bash teams so it kind of does feel like the first day of school um, getting to meet um, newer teammates or seeing those teammates that you haven't seen in literally a whole year so it's fun. How different is it for you having come from another team from the Heat you've been here a little while now but just is it different or now do you feel like one of the the, the experienced campaigners? Um, first year was definitely different. Um, that was like the first move that I'd made in my career in quite a long time. So um, last year was quite um, overwhelming and exciting, but definitely this year, um, especially now that I live here in Victoria, um, definitely a, a more seamless transition. Um, yeah. Now, Hayley Matthews, this is a good get <laughs> to have her come and play, particularly with what she's been doing against Australia. Uh, over the last period of time, which you would know all about. What's it like to have her part of the Renegade? She's going to be captain. What's she like as a captain? Uh, we know what she's like as a player. Um, what are we going to get? Um, I feel like Hayley's character, she's just so chill. I think she's probably a typical sort of West Indian, like just really chill, really low key. Um, but she's really switched on at the same time. Her captaincy is is really good. I think you've sort of seen that over the West Indies series that we just played. Um, a lot of weight was on her shoulders and she was able to sort of hold on to that and, and dominate um, against us. So it's actually going to be really nice to have her on our team and not have to, to bowl to her in the game. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Given everything was coming out of the middle. Um, but, yeah, no, it's it's really cool. She spoke to us in our, our team meeting the other day and, um, yeah, all the girls are pretty pumped. So what's she like at training? Does she just tee off at training like she does in the <laughs> game or is she a little bit more circumspect trying to look after her, her teammates? <laughs> Oh, she's pretty similar, I think. Um, but she's still really meticulous with her training. It's not just all, all boom or bust. It, um, yeah, she still gets what she needs to get done. But, um, yeah, when you're bowling to you're pretty switched on with the ball coming <laughs> back to you, aren't you? <laughs> get out of the net. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So Harmon Preet Kaur, uh, you've also got Tammy Beaumont, some of the biggest names in world cricket playing your team. How much do you learn 
just having them around the group and how much do you ask questions or how, how often are you asking questions, trying to get as much information as you can from them? Uh, all the time. Um, you just try to be like a sponge and soak up all the information that you can because they've just played in so many different comps against so many different players um, and equally they've played against a lot of the players here in the Big Bash. So um, we did a little bit of team scouting um, in our meeting the other day and I got paired up with Tam and um, even just um, – I think as a bowler, you had to kind of talk about how you were going to try and get wickets or try and get batters out. And equally, the batters were telling us how they were going to score. And just from her perspective as an opening batter, just seeing how she was going to take down bowlers um, and planning out her over. And that was really interesting. And, you know, I don't think I'll be opening the batting anytime <laughs> soon. Um, but, um, yeah, it was just really cool insight to see how she goes about it. And then Simon Helmet, who he's been a coach all around the world for such a long period of time now. Um, he's such a fun person to be around, but he also can be quite serious when he needs to be yeah. as well. Ha- explain him as a coach, having <laughs> had him for a while. Well, it's pretty it's hard. hard. It's hard it's question. It's very hard to do, isn't it? Um, yeah, I think like you said, like he brings so much energy and, and passion into the game. Like he just loves the game of cricket. Um, and with his experience like all over the world, I think um, managing different teams and seeing what works, I think – that's what he's done really well the last mm. few years has been able to get the team to gel and, um, yeah, I think manage the highs and lows really well because we've had a lot of them over the last couple of years. Um, but, yeah, somehow he's been able to sort of keep the group together and, um, yeah, keep us striving towards the goal at the end. But, um, yeah, he's super passionate, energetic. I think his fielding stuff is the best part of it, I reckon. Oh, God. Um, yeah, he probably gets into it, doesn't he, with all his kookaburra kit yeah. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> no, he um, loves it. But, yeah, oh, it's bloody hard to d- describe how I was coaching it. I think, like, one point is all the girls at this level, like, don't need coaching. Like, we're all good enough to play at this level. And I think one thing he really does is just drive, like, belief within a group. And I guess that's credit to why he's been across so many different franchises. But, like, we don't need need coaching throughout this tournament. It's about, like, feeling good, playing good and just getting ready for game day. And I think he really, like, um, he really – puts that message like into the group like that he believes us and we all know like what to do and how to do it and we've done it you know a hundred times before um so I think yeah he's really more driving like group culture and and gelling the group um and at the end of the day I think the most successful teams probably have a lot of that is he a bit like a dad to you all as well or is he a coach to you all I'd probably say he's a bit like a dad yeah I agree cracks a few stinker (laughs) dad jokes um he really hangs on duels all the time so he tries to keep it really light and fun but like you said he does you know coach or, or get serious when he needs to um yeah he's a good he's a good fellow yeah it's a you've got a unique team this year I know you're a fast bowler but uh Georgia's one of Georgia Wareham is one of a number of spinners in the team and it does look like you're going to have a bit of a point of difference in your in what your attack looks like but also the way you'll play yeah I think um Oh, probably bar the last couple of years, we've probably been predominantly sp- like a spin team. And I think that's worked quite well for us. Mm. Um, yeah, and having that sort of mix of um, – well, unfortunately not having soap this year will be a bit different. But um, in the past having, you know, a left arm off here, a leg spinner, an off spinner. So we've ha- always had a bit of everything, um, which has been really cool. But, yeah, I think it will be a, a lot a lot different. I think Josie Dooley will stand up to the stumps for <laughs> most probably of the most of the game. Yeah. <laughs> probably bar your overs. Yeah. But um, – yeah, I think that will be different for us and, um, yeah, I think it is a strategy. I think pace off the ball is always um, a little bit harder to hit. Um, but, yeah, given what wickets we're going to get, we're not exactly sure. But um, mm. during Big Bash, they're always pretty good. But, yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's worked for us in the past. So, yeah, I think it's cross it does this year too. Does it put more pressure on you as one of the – I mean, there's more than just you, but there's <laughs> not only just as someone that can put a bit of speed on the ball that – that your role becomes – it's almost ro- roles reversing rather mm. than having one or two spinners. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's the other way around. Um, I don't think pressure would be the word. I th- I, I think there's like a real opportunity um, to just try and take wickets. Um, I think like as spinners you'll look to hold down and end. <clears throat> Wolfie's quite attacking but almost like a little bit of a licence or freedom just to try and bowl fast at the stumps. Um, yeah, which I'm looking forward to but – um, in saying that, I probably know that I'm probably going to have a bit of a target on my back um, having the pace on the yeah. ball. So um, it's just going to uh, bring a really good contest and um, competition within the over. So, yeah, it'll be good. Yeah, I, it's really, I reckon it's really interesting. What about the expectations on the season for a team? We'll get, 
We'll get to, to the individuals shortly, but it's just from a team point of view. What are the expectations? Yeah, I mean, we always want to be the one standing at the end of the year. I think that's the goal every year for, for every team, to be honest. Um, but look, the way that our squad's shaped up, I think we've got a real chance to do that as well. I think our international experience is unbelievable. Mm. Um, and the form that, that those those players are in is really exciting. But even the like domestic players that we've got, like Josie Dooley's been making runs for fun in WNCL, mm. same mm. as Webby. Mm. Um, mm. Ella Hayward's been comes in leaping strides. She's like improved so much from last year. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I can't name everyone, but <laughs> yeah, I think it's really exciting. But I think the competition is going to be really even this year. I think the draft sort of spread that international talent out a little bit. Um, so it's, it's, I think it's pretty hard to sort of pick mm. who's going to be you know, one of the tougher teams. But isn't that probably one of your strengths is you have so many contributors? The one I wanted to talk about was Jess Duffin and what she can bring because she could be almost the wild card in a lot of ways that people forget how good a player she is yeah. and the role that she can play in a number of different positions for you. Yeah. Um, you just you just seem to have a lot of different players that can do different things for you, which I think you probably need in – in BBL or WBBL cricket? Well, that's T20 cricket. Like yeah. you just need one player to stand up at one um, given time. Um, and I think Jess Duffin is a, is a wild card. Um, and she's had a bit of time out of cricket, but she's come back and hit the ball better than ever. So um, I think, yeah, we've got some really good internationals, but the domestic flavour throughout, um, we just need one or two people to do a job. Um, and that, that could be the game for us. So yeah, huge opportunity, and like Web, uh, Wolf said, there's there's girls in good form at the moment. Now, for those that are watching, you, you can tell apart the two Georges, but for those uh, listening uh, through the podcast, it's obviously a bit different. So I'm going to talk to Georgia Wareham now, um, <laughs> so if we can try and change, so we know who's who. Coming back from your knee injury, it's two years now. Have you come back better than you thought you would? Has has things come back to you? You're still back straight back in the Australian team. Since, since it's happened? How do you assess post-knee injury? Um, I think initially when I first came back, um, I played a couple of WNCL games in Queensland before I went away with the Aussie stuff to the World Cup. I think that was – I feel like that all happened so quickly. I didn't really have time to sort of think about it. And um, I probably back came back a little bit better than I, I thought I was going to in terms of like form-wise, I reckon. But – I think it probably caught up to me a little bit after that towards the end of the back uh, back end of the World Cup. Um, yeah, I was prob- probably just struggling with consistency um, and probably have been a little bit since. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was such a long time out of the game. It was like 15 months, I think, yeah. all up. So, yeah, I mean, it was, it was that was tricky and I think like it's tough seeing Soph go through something similar at the moment. Um, but, yeah, obviously, like, sort of go through the waves on, the, on return. But, yeah, I feel like I'm... On the up now, which is which is which is nice. So, um, yeah. Were there doubts at the time? I mean, it, so much, so many good things were happening happening to you before your knee injury. I don't want to keep going back to the knee injury, <laughs> but you know, you just made your test debut. The next month, all of a sudden, knee injury. Fifteen months is a long time to be out. Were there times where you're thinking, oh, I'm not sure I can come back from this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, God, yeah. During, <laughs> yeah, there was plenty of those moments, especially early days when. So restricted on what you can do, um, yeah. Like just walking around is like a bit of a struggle, and and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, that was pretty flattening. And you sort of look at it from those early days, and you're thinking, oh, I've got still got like nine months to come back, and sort of like I'm going to miss out on. And at the time, I missed out on the Ashes, um, the Com Games. Like there were so many big events, the World Cup as well. So, I think at the time I was like, this is the worst thing that could have possibly happened, <laughs> um, especially timing wise. So I was. Yeah, I probably beat myself up early, but um, yeah, fortunately at the same time, Tay and so were also doing some rehab. Um, so I had mates alongside me that were also in a similar spot and missing out on the same stuff as I was, so I couldn't really be too flat about it. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's all part of it really. It, was that good for your confidence that they picked you so quickly back in the Australian team when you were available to play? Does that Did that help you? I know you said maybe you came back too quickly, but just to know that the Australian selectors still thought, yep, you, you, we still believe in you. We still think you're the you're the person that can be the person you were before the injury. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was that was pretty cool, but it was actually really interesting how that sort of folded, um, or unfolded, sorry. Uh, like two months before I came back, I think I had like a meeting with all the Cricket Australia staff um, and essentially they were like, I don't think we're going to be able to take you to this World Cup. Like it's going to be too tight and I was... 
So I was sitting there with with John Owen at S and C, and I was like, oh, this is this is a bit shit. But <laughs> <laughs> sort of just like yeah, that flat me a bit, and then sort of like can't do anything about it anyway. Rehab just continues. Um, do the same thing regardless. So then, yeah, I, I came back to play those WNCL games. Um, did okay in those games, but um, for them to sort of um, back me and be able to pick me for that World Cup was, was pretty cool. And it, felt, it was so weird when I got the call. I was like, oh, really? Like, you sort of told me the complete opposite <laughs> yeah. the other day. But, um, yeah, it's, 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 it was pretty cool for them to be able to back me throughout the 15 months and even give, still giving me my contract throughout that and um, supporting me through it was, was really cool. And, um, yeah, no, I'm very thankful for it. It's hard to believe you, you're still only 24, but you've, had, you've done so much in your career up until this point domestically and also internationally, multiple World Cups, um, you know, and, and with what you bowl, it's so different to what a lot of other people bowl. Do you still feel your best cricket's ahead of you and, and even some of the setbacks you've had it sort of gives you better perspective of things when it comes to cricket? Yeah, well, I hope the best is still to come. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, but you're almost a veteran, you're 24. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, well, there's so much cricket now. I think mm. there's so much opportunity to be able to... Um, yeah, play a lot more in a lot of different places. Like we saw in India, the WPL. Like I was I was fortunate to be able to um, play in that and experience that. So, yeah, I mean, I hope the best best is still yet to come. But um, yeah, I definitely think it sort of gave me a bit of perspective on, um, yeah, like I guess how big it is in my life, and um, yeah, I guess sort of trying to figure out things as well when I was when I was out, things to do outside of cricket, which which certainly helped. But um, yeah, it's, it's super exciting for what's to come. We'll get to Georgia Presswich shortly. Just <laughs> call you Jets. I'm it's, learning yeah. as well. This is awesome. So the experience of, of the WPL with the Giants, what, what was that like? And, <laughs> and, and also just being part of something that could be, become huge into the future. Yeah, I mean, we played the first game of the tournament and it was just absolutely, like, crazy. Like, uh, <laughs> we didn't really know what was, what was happening. Like, it was a big ceremony before, like, it was like a big Bollywood stars coming on the stage. The fans were just screaming. Um, it was just the whole thing was just a crazy experience. Like I think it was three weeks, the, the whole tournament, probably not even. But, um, yeah, it was just amazing to be able to sort of see how how much they love the cricket over there. That was my first time in India. So mm. being able to experience that and, and be part of the first WPL was, was pretty amazing. And, um yeah, unfortunately, the wickets were all roads over there, so I, I didn't play much. Um, yeah, so, no, it was, it was cool. Like, I'd love to be able to go back and, and experience it um, for a second time. So you've got that, you've got the 100, you've got all the things that happen here in Australia now, to the point where Ash Gardner has been saying, well, we're, I'm not sure that maybe the WBBL is a bit long because of all the cricket <laughs> we're playing around the, around the world. For someone that was listed as a Renegades player at 15, you've been part of the Australian setup as a teenager. Can you believe how quickly this is all happening for women's cricket? Yeah, it's been amazing. I think when when I was in underage cricket, I think just hearing the whispers of WBBL at the start was like, oh, this is like, that's really cool to be able to like play in that. And then, um, yeah, getting picked up when I was 16 in that first year, I didn't, I don't think I played any games. But um, yeah, to see how much it's grown from then to now is, is amazing and um, yeah, all those other tournaments that are available to pl- for players to play in now is is pretty amazing. But yeah, I, I don't know what <laughs> to compare what Ash said. I think it's it really important for our domestic players to be able to experience so much um, T Twenty cricket throughout the Big Bash. But um, yeah, no, it is is really cool to see how far it's come. Do you feel it's a much better standard now? And that say the girls that are coming through at fifteen and sixteen, like you were, you look at them and go, "Gee, look." I can't believe how good you are at the age you are with just the natural progression of the sport, the extra exposure you're getting, you know, the girls looking up to not boys anymore, men, they're looking up to you guys. Yeah, I think I think everyone's improved so much. I think we look at some of the players that we've got in our squad now, like Sarah Kennedy, she's only 16 and like a left arm quick, she's amazing. Like I think everyone's scared of her when she comes <laughs> to bowl in the nets. But um, yeah, I think... You saw that with Phoebe Litchfield as well yeah. when she first came into the WBBL and and took that by storm. So I think the players that are coming in now, I feel like they're so much more ready for um, for international cricket and and I guess high level domestic cricket as well. So I think it's it's come a long way. Do you do you understand the responsibility now of being a hero <laughs> to that next generation that come and watch you play and want to have your number on 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 their backs of their renegade shirts and 
want to be the next George aware. Do you do you feel that? Not, not so much pressure, but or responsibility. But that's pretty cool. I wouldn't say hero, but um, no, absolutely. <laughs> but oh no, I think it's really cool to be able to see a lot of young boys and girls at, at our games and um, and see them with our Renegades kits on. Sometimes it's Stars kit, but you just have to look past that. But um, yeah, no, it is really exciting, and I think to. Yeah, see those young kids at the games and, um, yeah, seeing a lot more girls is really is really cool now to be able to sort of see that they're all playing cricket. And I think all the community cricket, I th- the more women's teams and stuff that we're seeing these days is really cool. I, th- I think back home in what, like, I grew up, there was no um, girls' teams and they've got one there now. So I think that, that sort of thing is amazing to see how far it's really grown. Do you get to go back to Mortlake much and to see what's going on down there? <laughs> yeah, I do every now and then. I think the hardest, <laughs> hardest time is during the cricket season because I'm the busiest. Mm. So um, I don't get to see too much of the cricket back home, but um, a little bit during their pre-season stuff, which is very different to what we would do. <laughs> Absolutely. Now you can have a rest now. <laughs> I can talk to Georgia Presswich. Now, Georgia making the move down to Victoria full-time, as you said, so it's not just for the Renegades but also for Victoria. How have you found it? Um, <clears throat> so far so good. A little bit cooler than the Brisbane weather that I was used to. Um, but you know, yeah, feel like I'm really settling in now. Um, found a place to live. Um, the girls have all been really welcoming and yeah, it feels, um, feels like I've kind of been here a bit longer than I actually have been. Yeah. So why did you do it? Um, yeah, a few reasons. Um, <clears throat> I'd kind of been in that Queensland setup for quite some time. Um, and kind of just felt like, uh, I needed a little bit of a challenge or um, needed to push myself as a, as a player to um, kind of go to the next level. And um, I was kind of looking somewhere where I'd have that opportunity. Um, also, my brother lives here, um, Jack. So um, family's quite big for me. So um, to be close to him was a, a bit of a draw card. Um, but yeah, probably just the opportunity and, and to kind of train alongside all the Aussie players that they have here. Um, there's no secret that Victoria have a, have a lot of Aussie players and up and coming um, Aussie players. So um, something in the water down here kind of made me want to make the move and, and see what the fuss was all about. Um, but yeah, just um, training alongside those kind of girls, uh, see how they go about their business, um, both on the field and mentally has been really cool. Um, but yeah, a, a few things, yeah. So you, you mentioned Jack because he's... He's done it just a little bit before you in a lot of ways. Did you lean on him about, hey, if I, I do this, do you think it's a good idea and and all that sort of thing or did you want to make it your own journey? Um, I did want to make it my own journey. Um, it, it was a really difficult decision and I kind of just wanted um, someone to tell me the answer and then my dad quickly told me that no one could make that decision but me. Um, so, yeah, it, it took me a while to get to that decision and um, – I did kind of reach out to Jack when I was getting close to choosing Victoria that, you know, if I was to come down, would he want to live with me and, <laughs> and would he be okay with me um, coming and crashing his party? But, um, no, he was really good and, and he kind of sent me a message right before I decided and said, um, like, it's never going to feel easy and, and because we're such a close family, moving away from home um, from him was, was really hard. Um but he just said, like, him being here away from the family and, and kind of taking his own journey was, um, like, the, the biggest journey itself. And um, he's felt like he's really grown up and he's been through a lot of challenges, but um, he just said he wouldn't regret it. So um, he just said, whatever you do, like, I'll back you and um, I really hope you come here. And he goes, I don't know if we'll live together if that's a good idea, <laughs> but um, here we are. Um, <laughs> but, you know, he was really cool about it. And then what about your dad? Because your dad played a lot of cricket for Queensland. Um I would imagine growing up he had such a big influence on you as cricketers to all of a sudden have a, a daughter and a son playing for Victoria. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, you know, he can't really have a leg to stand on because he actually came from New South Wales. He moved when he was about 18. So, okay. um, yeah, I think, yeah, secretly he didn't want his, his daughter to move away from home, but um, I think he knew that that was something that I had to do at that time and, Um, I think he was kind of thinking that it wasn't forever. And, um, since then every weekend I ring dad, I'm like, I'm never coming home. Like Melbourne's awesome. (laughs) The girls are great. Have you seen these markets and the food here? It's awesome. (laughs) So, um, yeah, no, he was really supportive. And mum was probably the one that was a little bit more distraught at me leaving. Um, you know, she lost Jack and then she's lost me. So I think Will, my youngest brother is absolutely copying it at home with, from mum, you know, are you home for dinner? Where are you going today? Like what time will you be home? So... Um, yeah, no, dad, dad was really good about it too. What was it like growing up 
it, because you, when we've heard stories before about you know a, a famous father who's played international cricket or domestic cricket having a son, uh, maybe having a daughter, maybe they're two brothers, which is the case with the Elliots, yeah. um, with with Matthew being a, a superstar here in Victoria when it comes to cricket with um, with the boys coming through, uh, Zach and Sam. But for you, a, a brother and a sister, what was it like in the backyard? Um, yeah, fun, um, memorable um, would be one of one of the words I used to describe it. Um, Will and Jack were like backyard fanatics at backyard cricket. Like they'd have all the rules, like electric wiki, like yeah. one hand, one bounce. Um, and to be honest, like when they were playing, like I wouldn't want to have a bar of it. Like I was totally disinterested in playing backyard cricket. Um, I could think of 10 better things to do. Um, it wasn't until I kind of started playing cricket in year like nine, 10, um, that I actually kind of started going out and playing with them and they'd never let me bat. Um, that I, I'd only bowl, which is why I think I bowl now. Um, uh, and I think, yeah, they only let me bat so a couple of times and I'd just try and launch a few and then <laughs> drop the bat and walk inside and say, that's what you, you get for not letting me have a bat. But, um, yeah, they were pretty pretty feisty I think dad called it quits on backyard cricket pretty early because the boys were starting to bowl a bit of heat and he was like I can't let my let my ego go so um yeah they, they were pretty feisty because it's interesting because in in my backyard um the boys I've got two sons and they love their cricket so much and I've got a daughter who absolutely hates cricket <laughs> Because all their brothers do is play cricket. So yep. maybe a bit similar with you yeah. until you got a bit older. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, to be honest, I, I would go and only go and watch Jack and Will play cricket so I could, um, you know, watch all the other boys play with them. Like I wasn't really interested in watching the cricket. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it wasn't until, yeah, I started playing cricket that uh, I'd go out and, and have a bit of a, a run around with them. But, um, yeah, yeah, I can definitely see where she's coming from. Yeah. So now you are where you are. As you said, you... You're close to your to your brothers. With Jack, do you lean on him at all from the point from a cricket point of view, or do you still go to your dad, or is it more your coaches and your teammates that you would lean on in terms of support or advice? Or yeah, it's a good question. Um, I'd probably say dad's first port of call, um, particularly with the bowling side of stuff. Like obviously, he's incredible and in what he knows and his skill set, and um, probably just his ability to understand the situation like if I'm not having a good day or I'm not doing too well or something like he, he's quite good at um, reading that and delivering advice um, suitable for me um, so he's probably my first port of call um, closely um, Jack behind him um, yeah Jack's pretty good um, we, we kind of have a couple of, uh, a real, real talk at home about what's going on and what's happening and um, you know if I'm going through something, chances are that Jack's probably been through it or vice versa. So kind of understanding what we both did to kind of get through that has been really cool to share that experience. Um, yeah. And similar players too. Yeah, yeah, similar players. Um, even Will, my youngest brother, um, he, he's kind of the outlier where if I'm not having a good day, I'll, I'll see a little Snapchat notification on my phone. I'll open up and he'll say, oh, you probably should have done this. You know, there was, <laughs> you know, that you got out doing this. There was no square. You could have just dropped and run in there for one. <laughs> so he's pretty savage, Will. But, um, yeah, Jack and I, we lean on each other quite a bit. Because I can imagine the other side of that is having a family full of cricketers. It can be a bit intense where it's too much cricket that yeah. you don't get that release. Would that be fair? Yeah, I um, I definitely say now that we're a bit older, we're probably a little bit more aware of that. Yep. Um, when we were younger, kind of all living under the one roof at home, um, it was it would be pretty tense, especially like when, um, like I was contracted at Queensland quite young, and Jack was really working hard for a spot there, so there was a little bit of angst, um, you know, between the household, um, and, and yeah, trying to. Yeah, the stories at the dinner tables about, you know, who took the most wickets or who took the most runs that they were, were pretty full on. But um, I'd definitely say now that we're a bit older, um, there's not as much cricket on the TV and, um, you know, I can kind of read the room and, and so can Jack, you know, not to ask any questions if he doesn't need to or, you know, I know how to get on my cricket or play cricket and, <laughs> and read the scorecard. So if it's not a good day, sometimes I just I'll leave it yeah. for a bit. No, fair enough. So as we wrap things up, I want to talk about just – not so much the WBBL, but there's been a lot of talk about the Matildas and what that's done for women's sport and whether the momentum can carry on even further. Is that do you do you look at that and think that might be the case, or do you feel that cricket um, has existed as one of the most popular sports, if not the most popular national sport, 
there is that it can can hold its own without having to sort of have other sports help them along the way? I'll ask Georgia where on that question <laughs> first. <clears throat> um, yeah, I feel like it helps all female sport in general, really. Um, we probably saw a little bit of this, uh, like a similar thing happen to cricket after the T20 World Cup. Yeah. Um, it was unfortunately stalled by a little bit of COVID throughout that, mm. but I still think that like built up so much momentum for the game and um, – Brought a lot more eyes to the game and, and bums on seats for a little while there. But, um, yeah, I think the Matildas, like what they were able to achieve is amazing. And I think we've just sort of seen the um, crowds and stuff in the A-League have, been, have yep. been amazing since. So, yeah, I feel like it, it does no harm to be a sport at all. Georgia Presswich, you got to answer that question now. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, I'd probably – like I loved watching um, – the Matildas play and I think what we will see is like the next calibre of players come through just being next level, similar to what we have seen in cricket over the last two, well, since since the World Cup, that two years is the younger players coming in are just absolutely relentless and ruthless and first ball they'll try and ramp. Um, like they just, not no respect, but they just go about their game so differently to the current crop of players and I think that's what we'll start to see like in the soccer um, in the netball, um, especially those those sports moving into um, the is it the Olympics twenty eight yeah. yeah yeah the sports coming in so um, like it, it's great that there's so much support for the Matildas now but I'm just really excited to see the next crop of players who have sat you know at fifteen watching this um, this all this sport come through and then you know actually come through at a, at a completely different level yep. ready to take on the game. And then the WBBL, what are we going to see this year? Is there any sort of themes or anything different? Are there any things we should be all looking forward to watching that perhaps we haven't seen previously? I think I think a few girls have said it, but I, I truly believe that the, the comp is quite even this year um, and the calibre of international players that are in each franchise are unbelievable. So I think... I think this year is probably going to be the best um, showcase of, of d- both domestic and international cricket um, in all the T20 comps, um, which is pretty exciting. Georgia? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, same really. But I think, yeah, like the, the calibre of players we've got, I reckon there's going to be a lot of really high scores. Mm. Um, and a lot of the games that we play on, I mean, grounds that we play on, um, I think there's going to be yeah, some, some really big scores, which is really exciting and hopefully gets a lot of fans in, in the games. And how exciting is it to be back playing in a few more bigger stadiums as well? I know it's been a real focus of um, B- WBBL organisers for that to take place, mm-hmm. getting to play at the MCG. But pro- without being disrespectful, less <coughs> regional cricket and more sort of high-profile stadium cricket. Yeah, I think that's really exciting for the game. I think a lot of players wouldn't have been able to play on the MCG before, which is which is really cool for them. And um, yeah, hopefully it attracts some more people to come and come and watch those games and. Like those games at Adelaide and SCG. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's yeah, that's amazing for the game. I think um, any time you get to sort of play, get the opportunity to play on those those types of grounds is is pretty special, and you don't sort of forget those for for the rest of your life. I think, um, given how much history they all have, which is which is really cool, and yeah, hopefully lots more fans come to those games. Yeah, Georgia Wareham as an experienced Australian cricketer, she plays in the big stage all the time. Yeah, but gosh. What about some for you and some of your teammates to to play regular cricket on some of the, the bigger grounds in, in Australia? Yeah, um, very exciting. It gives me goosebumps to think that I could potentially play at the MCG. Like that's something I never thought that I would do in, in my career. Um yeah, and I and I love the history that's attached to all of those big cricket ga- cricket grounds as well. You, you walk through the change rooms and you see like the FIFA boards and the hundred boards, and it really just inspires you and um, you know really pushes you to actually try and get on one of those lists. So um, yeah, I'm super excited. Well, thank you very much for coming in and having a chat to us. Really appreciate it. I know it's busy in the build up to to game one, um, but you guys have been great with your time. We haven't had stars players up here just. Just the red, so <laughs> noted exactly that should be noted. Uh, good luck for the tournament. Really appreciate you coming up, and hopefully it goes well for you individually, but also for the team. Thanks, thanks for having yeah. us, Georgia Wareham and Georgia Press. Which what do we call you, Georgia Square. Georgia Square. <laughs> Georgia Square. <laughs> hopefully it goes well for the girls in red with the the team and the competition getting underway this weekend. We'll catch you next time.